Still, I haven't done this chapter with you. But you have not done this chapter. No, sir. Okay, let's discuss each and everything. So, is the screen is, uh, yeah, just um, let me take the screenshot for this one. In this chapter, that uh, you you have not done carbonates compound chapter as a whole. Uh, I haven't done the chapter with you, no. With me, but uh, this is there any other teacher here te teaching you this chapter? Yes, yes, sir. Who is teaching you in the school? Uh, yes, sir. And here, nobody is nobody teaches you this chapter. No, sir. So why have you not informed this uh, this to us? Uh, I don't know. Just a minute then. Not able to share. Yeah. Yeah. So here in this question, what you are going to get is the question. Uh, it is being asked to you that what is the functional group in this one? The functional group, uh, let me open that uh, question paper in my phone so that I should not go again and again back to the to this one okay so here is just give me a second so yes the question was that a compound z on heating with excess of concentrated sulfuric acid a compound z on heating with excess of uh, sulfuric acid gives an unsaturated compound y so it is compound x when you heat it Okay, this is the chemical reactions that you need to understand. Uh, okay, and if you have not done this one, we will discuss. Okay, uh, this one with you. Uh, okay, so compound X when it is heated uh, with with concentrated sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, then it gives a compound Y. Okay, gives a compound Y. X X is also X when react with, it is also saying that X when react with metal, sodium metal, then it produce a gas. It produce a gas which is, uh, means it, it produce a gas which is a colorless gas, okay? And uh, write the chemical equation, you have to find X and, X and Y in this one, okay? So what is X and what is Y? So you know that uh, X, uh, when it react with, X when react with, uh, concentrated H2SO4 H2SO4 what can be the H X so the reaction between this one you know that it is it is a dehydration reaction in which alcohol generally alcohols alcohol when react with when it is treated with alcohols alcohol has the same formula C2H5OH that it can be a two, two carbon alcohol so when it is reacted with concentrated H2SO4 so it will gives you Alkenes, 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 okay, plus water. This is called dehydration reaction. This is called dehydration reaction. Okay, understood? Understood? Yes, yes sir. Now it is saying that X when react with Na, you know that alcohols when react with, alcohols when react with Na, Na, then it will gives you Salt plus hydrogen gas. Salt plus hydrogen gas. Okay. So, what is that salt? Whatever bit, but it is asking for the gas. So, gas that is hydrogen gas. That is hydrogen gas. So, let me take the uh, take that questions on the screen so that you can understand it more betterly. Just give me a minute. Okay.
So now you understood this question. This is the questions on your screen. Is it visible to you now? Yes, so this sir. Is very, yes, sir. Very important question. Please note it down if you have noted not, noted this one. A compound X on heating with concentrated sulfuric acid gives an unsaturated an unsaturated compound. Unsaturated means it is an alkene. So it is very simple that it is saying unsaturated. So this is dehydration reaction. Okay. Now it is not saying that which alcohol it is. Okay. It is a two carbon alcohol, three carbon alcohol. Because the two carbon alcohols when heated, uh, when it when treated with concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so it will gives you alkenes like it is CH2 double bond CH2 plus water and same this C2H5OH when react with Na it will gives you C2H5ONA sodium ethoxide plus hydrogen gas. This is called sodium ethoxide ethoxide plus hydrogen gas is there. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. Understood. So, uh, yeah, identify X, Y, and Z. So, this is X, this is Y, this is X, and the hydrogen gas. It is talking for the gas Z now. Uh, so, we have to evolve a gas Z. So, Z, Z gas is this one. But since it is not telling us any uh, two carbon compound or three carbon compound, so what you are going to write the answer? You can take that X is alcohol, uh, Y is alkene, and Z is hydrogen gas. But if it mention you a two carbon compound, a three carbon compound, when X, if it is written a compound only, if it is written a two carbon compound, so two carbon compound means it is alcohol, then your answer will be alcohol, L ethene, sorry, then your answer will be ethanol, ethanol, ethene, and hydrogen gas. But if it is not given, it is only saying that it is a concentrated, it is a compound X. It is not mentioning you whether a two carbon compound, three carbon compound. So you will say that X is alcohol, alcohol, Y is alkene, and Z is hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. Okay, note it, note it down, please. Done this one noted. Tell me fast noted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. next. Here the second question we are going to have is is define the term functional group. You know what is functional group? An atom or a group of atom attached to an hydrocarbon chain is called functional group. An atom or a group of atom or a group of atom attached to an hydrocarbon chain, an atom or a group of atom attached to an hydrocarbon chain that determines, that determines the physical, the uh, that determines the chemical, chemical and physical properties, physical properties of hydrocarbon chain of hydrocarbon chain is called functional group is called functional group okay note it down is called functional group okay now so what is the functional group and for example for example cho aldehyde rcho aldehyde carboxylic acid cooh rcoh this is carboxylic acid carboxylic acid alcohol is oh roh alcohol alcohol so this is the functional group okay these are the functional group 
And which is the functional group here? You see that it is H, uh, CHO. CHO. Okay. Are you getting? Are there? Yes. So this is CHO. Okay, so this is an aldehyde. And this one? Which functional group is, is in this one? Alcohol. No, it is carboxylic acid. C O O H. So this is carboxylic acid. That's it. Got it? Yes. Understood? Summer, you understood? Yes, sir. Okay, next. Just a minute. Mm. Let's take the next question. Here we have this question on your screen. Write the chemical equation to show that what happens when esters react with base. So how will you write the answer? Write the chemical equation to show that what happens when ester react with base. So what are esters? Uh, Summer, may I know that? Have you not studied this chapter for a single time? In uh, the school I you have studied, na? You studied in the school, na? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's discuss. So this is esters when react with base. So let's talk. Ester is actually the compound that is going to have COO. Here it is having one car, uh, hydrocarbon chain and it is also having one hydrocarbon chain. That is the ester. That is the functional group of ester. Ester, for example, for example, like we have CH3COOC2H5. This is an ester. This is an ester. It is a sweet smelling substance. Sweet smelling substance. Okay. So this is a journal reaction that esters, you have to write out that like you, you that you remember no? that as acids when react with base, acid when react with base, okay, they will give you salt and water. Okay. Uh, salt and water. So similar is this reaction. You have to memorize this one. Okay. This uh, there are some there are some general equations, na? Like uh, like like you remember like you remember that acid when react with acid when react with metals, acid when react with metals they form salt plus hydrogen gas. Okay, acids when react with metals, they form salt plus hydrogen gas. So similarly, you have to remember that when esters are going to react with base and base is fixed here, NaOH. Base, it will form. Salt of carboxylic acid, or we can say the sodium salt because it is sodium here. So we write sodium salt of carboxylic acid. Sodium salt of carboxylic acid plus respective alcohol plus respective alcohol. It is going to form respective alcohol. Respective alcohol means first of all, let me let let me go uh, here. Here we are going to have this one. So this is very simple that esters when react with NaOH, they will give you sodium salt of carboxylic acid. And what is sodium salt of carboxylic acid? Like, like we have CH3COOH. This is a two carbon carboxylic acid named as ethanoic acid. So it's salt of carboxylic acid will be CH3COONA. And this is the sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So it will give you sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So this is the action. What happens when ester react with base? So same answer. It will give you sodium salt of carboxylic acid and respective alcohol. 
And when you are going to write this, you have to give an example. For example, for example, like we have CH3COOC2H5 as an ester. So when it react with NaOH, it will it will gives you sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So these two together are going to make a compound. Okay, they will form CH3COONA. This is sodium salt of carboxylic acid. And these, these together is going to form another compound. That is alcohol plus C2H5OH. This is how we are going to get. Understood? Understood? Yes, sir. So this is how when esters react with base. So please note it down. Note it down fast. Note it down fast. Done noted. The same, same, similarly, another chemical equation. If I talk about, if I talk about another chemical equation, so here we have the next chemical equation. That what happens when when ethanol react with ethanoic acid in the presence of sulfuric acid? So it is also a general equation that L ethanol. What is ethanol? Ethanol is a type of alcohol. Eth means two. It is a two carbon alcohol. So ethanol is a two carbon alcohol. So alcohol when react with carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid is a two carbon carboxylic acid, two carbon carboxylic acid. So it is carboxylic acid. So when alcohol react with carboxylic acid in the presence of concentrated H2SO4, then it will give you esters, a ester plus water, ester plus water. So now it is not asking that uh, you will not say that it will form esters. It is asking ethanol when react with ethanoic acid, what is in the presence of sulfuric acid, what it is going to form. So you will say that ester will be formed, but you have to name that esters. Okay, don't write because it is not asking alcohol when react with carboxylic acid. It is not asking uh, carboxylic acid and alcohol. General equation, it is not asking that what happened when acid react with base. So it will give you salt and water. But if I ask you what happens when NaCl, sorry, uh, SCl react with uh, H2SO4, uh, sorry, S SCl react with NaOH. So you have to mention that it will form salt and water and the salt form will be NaCl and water. Okay, you have to mention the name of the salt because it is specifically asking. Got it? Got it? Yes. So here you have to write it down that alcohols when react with carboxylic acid and it is going to form esters. So write it, You how will you write it? Alcohol. So alcohol is two carbon alcohol, that is C2H5OH. When react with carboxylic acid, what's the formula of that carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid? It is CH3COOH. In the presence of concentrated H2SO4, then it is it will be going to form what? What it is going to form? It will form ester. The name of that ester, the name of that ester would be. So how first of, first you have to write the equations where equation is being required. So you have to write the equation. This is ethanol, two carbon alcohol. This is ethanoic acid, two carbon carboxylic acid, two carbon carboxylic acid. So how water is formed by using this one and this one. This is water. This is water here. It is formed here. 
So the remaining you have to add. So don't don't add it like this way. You have to add it first. You have to write the carboxylic acid part here. Carboxylic acid part here. That is CS3COO, and then write this portion. Write this portion here. Write this portion here. Here, okay. Take this portion and write it here. Here C2H5. Got it? Yes. So this is ester. This is the name of ester. And the name of this ester is ethyl ethanoid. Why ethyl? Because C2H5 name is ethyl. Ethyl. And this CS3, the two carbon uh, O8 group. This CS3, OO is O8. This CS3, COO. This is ethanoid. Ethanoid. 8 so the name of this will be ethyl ethanoid. Ethyl ethanoid. So note it down. Ethyl ethanoid will be formed as an ester. Note it down, please. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and if simply, if I ask you that, if this, if this is an ester, if this ester is going to react with NaOH, so what is going to form? What is going to form? This we were assuming that esters react with base. So just we are just reacting this ester, ester that is given to you. CS3COO, C2H5 plus NaOH. Okay, so it will give you CS3COO, Na, sodium, ethanoid, ethanoate. Why sodium ethanoid? Because this time it is not C2H5 because C2H5 name is ethyl. If it is C2H5, you will write ethyl ethanoid. But it is sodium here, so write it sodium ethanoid. Because this group is going to have, okay, this group name is ethanoid. Okay, this group name is ethanoid. And respective alcohols. So what is the respective alcohol? This C2H5 NOH. So what do what do you mean by the word respective alcohol? That whenever an ester is formed, it is always formed when a carboxylic acid, a carboxylic acid is going to react with alcohol. S alcohol. Okay. So whatever the alcohol, which alcohol is used here by for preparation of this one, that alcohol we are going to get. So you, you can see here that for the formation of this alcohol, we use ethanol, the two carbon alcohol. Two carbon alcohol we are using. So here, if this same ester is treated with NOH, you will get the same alcohol, two carbon alcohol. That is ethanol. Got it? Understood? Yes. Sir. Noted this all questions. Are you noting this one? Noting down this one? Yes. Okay. Next question. Let's take the next question. So what is, what is homologous series? The question is that what is homologous series and write the general formula of alkanes and alkynes and draw the structure of the first members of each of the two carbons. So homologous series, we can say that it is the series of two carbons. Means we can say that uh, the compounds of hydrocarbons in which the successive member differ by CH2 group. What do you mean? Like for example, if I'm saying C2H5OH. The next member of this one will be, we will add one more carbon and two hydrogens. If it is five, it will become seven and then OH. 
So this and this is called, uh, these two are the members of homologue. They are the homologous series. Like if I'm having C to H6, it is, it is ethane, ethane. So the next member of this one will be C3. We add one carbon and two hydrogen H8. So this will be propane. Okay. So what is homologous series? If we write the definition, the compounds of hydrocarbon, the compounds of hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons having, having uh, the compounds of hydrocarbons in which the successive members, the compounds, the compounds of hydrocarbons in which, in which the successive member, in which the successive member is differ by CH2 group. Okay, the compounds of hydrocarbon in which the successive member is differ by CH2 group. Okay, that is called, uh, we'll consider it as homologue. But you need to keep in mind that two homologue must have the same functional group. Okay, you did not done. Uh, the two homologue, two homologue must have must have same functional group same functional group now it is asking that write the general formula of alkenes so general formula of alkenes is is cn h2n and general formula of alkynes is CnH2 minus two. Okay. And uh, if it is asking that, uh, yeah. So divided by CS two group and uh, between two carbons. So it is asking draw the structure of the first member of each series the structure. The first member of each series. So you know that at least for making alkene, we need two carbons now. So first member of this series will be ethene and this will be ethine. So you can draw the structure. It is not saying electron dot structure. So you will, you can draw this like this way. Ethine. Okay. Got it. Yes. Sir. Next. Have you copied this one? Madhya, why are you late? You were doing the test. Okay. Next. Next question. There's a question. Why do missiles formations? You give this test of the test series that is going uh, going. Uh, did you give this test of carbonates compound and life process, Madhya? And you or this? Yes, sir. Okay. So here the question that why does why does missiles formations take place when soap is added to water? And why missiles do not form when soap is added to ethanol? Soap is added to ethanol. Missiles, what are missiles? First of all, let me explain you what is missiles. Missiles is actually when we have dirt, which is non-polar in nature. Non-polar means it do not like water. And soap has two ends like this. Okay. One is the hydrocarbon chain like I'm having. This is the hydrocarbon chain of soap. Hydrocarbon chain. And another one is the COO. And this is the polar, polar part. Polar end. This is the polar end. Okay, polar end. Which is ionic, which is which get attracted to the water. So when we have dirt, which is polar in nature, so hydrocarbon chain get attached to that one. And it is a polar end which get attached with the with the water. Water. Okay, which is the which is CONA. 
C-O-O-N-A or C-O-N-A. N-A get distributed everywhere. So we write only C-O minus. Okay, because like we have, we add NaCl2 water. Uh, then it will give Na positive and Cl minus ion. The ions get dissociated. So this Na will go anywhere. But this carboxylate ion, CO minus ions, will get attached with the water molecules. Okay, this oxalate ion will get attached with the water molecule. So why? Because water is polar in nature. This is polar. But ethanol is not polar. So how it how the missiles will be formed? Missiles is not possible, no? For the formation of missiles, we need one polar substance and one non-polar substance. We need water as a polar and dirt as a non-polar. Since the soap has two, two, two parts, nah? one part is water attracting, water attracting, this is water repelling. Okay, the, or we can say that one end is polar, one end is polar, another end is non-polar. <coughs> so this end is going to attach with the dirt, which is non-polar. And this, this uh, end is going to attach with the water, which is polar. But if you have ethanol, so ethanol is not polar in nature. Ethanol does not show polarity. That's why, that's why missiles does not form when uh, soap is added to ethanol. So how will you write the answer for this question? So uh, you have to write that missiles formations take place. Uh, missiles formations. take place when when hydro uh, hydrocarbon part hydrocarbon carbon mm -hmm, hydrocarbon and of of soap get attached with polar dot polar dot and ionic end which is a polar end get attached with the water which is also polar okay no missiles will be formed uh, you have to write it write it down the no missiles formations will take place no missiles will form no missiles will form when we have both non-polar substance, non-polar substance, dirt and ethanol, which is which is also non-polar. Okay, non-polar. Hydrocarbon end attached with polar dot, okay, and ionic end water, okay. No missile formation take place when non-polar substance, uh, when both non-polar substance are there, okay. So you have to write it like this way. Got it? Understood? Tell me fast. Yes, you sir. understood. You understood the answer for this question. That why why missiles do not form in when ethanol is, when uh, soap is added to ethanol because it uh, uh, because ethanol is is actually ethanol is actually non polar in nature. So due to that reason, we will say that uh, this is not going to okay. You understood. Understood. So yes, once one substance should be polar, other substance should be non-polar to form the missiles. Okay, so this is the missiles when it is going to form. You can draw this missiles when one is polar and then one is non-polar. 
and if we have both non-polar you can draw with the help of diagram also so so the teacher it, it means you need to do the uh, means effort of the teaching should be reduced okay so when you have dirt here right here non-polar non-polar and this is co minus it is also ethanol c2h5oh is c2 uh, ethanol ethanol so this will repulsion noted down repulsion here the repulsion will take place okay because it is non-polar non-polar they both are non-polar that's why here the repulsion will take place so there will be no formation of missiles will take place let's move to the next question Mm. Okay, so here is the question that the state reason why carbons and carbon can neither form C4 positive and C4 negative. So this you can check it in your notes. But I'm going to explain you that why it cannot form C4 positive and C4 negative ions. Okay. This is the carbon atom that I'm going to make here. This is carbon atom. Okay. That it is. I'm going to make it here. And you have to uh, draw. Means the representation should be very, very good. Okay. Your representation should be very good. This is the carbon atom. And it is having two electrons. And here it is having the four electrons in its outermost shell. Okay. One. Two, three, and four. Now it is having the second. Okay, and it is. When it lose it, when it 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 loses that, it loses one electrons. Okay, so its size will keep on decreasing. So now it is losing, so its size will decreases. Okay, let it has losing uh, two electrons, two two electrons. Now, okay, so as you know that here, six proton are attracting the six electrons, six proton, six proton are attracting the five electrons, six protons are attracting the four electrons, six protons are attracting the representation. You need a good representation when you are writing your answer, okay? You have to show the diagrammatic structures, means that you have to, what whenever you are writing an answer, you must know that you have to ease the checking, checking of the examiner. Means you have to give him the hint that I know the answer and this is what you are finding in this, in this uh, question. I'm going to give you that, that value. Okay. So when you practice, keep on practicing, just your representation should be very accurate and very good. So, okay. So this is the three electrons. It is attracting. So uh, it cannot lose four electrons because as we go, as we keep on moving, uh, as one electron is being lo loosened out, the large amount of energy will be required to remove an extra electron. Because the size of the atoms will decrease as the as the more number of protons are attracting the lesser number of electrons. So size of the atom will, will decrease. And this will come closer to the nucleus. This electron will come to the nucleus. And you know that nucleus are carrying the positive charge. And to withdraw this electron, you have to overcome this force of attraction. So to overcome this force of attraction, let you give the energy. Now again, the for the next electron, it will become very small in size. Now the size will decrease of the shell. Now it will come closer to the nucleus. Now it is exponentially increasing. Now we can simply say that uh, uh, here, if you keep on removing the electrons, so the size of the atom will, uh, will keep on increasing. Uh, sorry, size of the atom will keep on decreasing as a result of which exponentially more and more energy will be required to remove all the four electrons which is not practically possible that's why carbon never forms c4 positive ions understood understood madhya yes sir yes okay so because the more number of proton is attracting so you how will you write this answer how will you write this answer so you have to write it that uh, in carbon in carbon 
uh, if it lose four electrons, uh, no, first, first, when you are writing an answer, just your first line should be very accurate and and strictly to the point that which which uh, with what is being asked in the question. So don't write it without thinking that what are you going to write. Just give a time, give a time to answer your questions. There is no need to uh, write it instantly with the first line. Just think it that what what should be your first line. Are you getting my point? What I'm saying. Just always think that what should be your first line. Don't write it, uh, writing it from the first. You just think first word in carbon. I started, but just think that what you are going to write, just keep keep a line, one or two lines in that one. And then, the, the, then after you have to start writing. Uh, okay. If you give a time while you are writing your answer, if you are giving that time to think the answer that what you are going to write, then it will be more appro uh, ap appropriate and more accurate uh, answer. Just give a time to yourself that what you are going to write before writing. Don't write it writing with the first one. Okay. So in carbon, there are four electrons are present. Okay. You can write it in carbon. There are four electrons are present in the outer motion. And if we, uh, in which the six protons are attracting the six electrons. And if we keep on removing the electrons, uh, then the, the size of the atom will keep on decreasing. Now you think the line, then you start writing the answer. Don't write it. You have not think that what you are going to write and you are just start, start writing this one. This is not allowed. The answer should be very. And if you think the line, then the chances of error and the cutting will be very less. You will not do like this. I am going to cut this line. No, no, I am not going to write. The chances of error will be very less. The chances of cutting very will be very less when you write the answer. When you think the answer, first, what you are going to write it. Okay. So what you are going to write in carbon, uh, six protons, six proton, proton attracts, attract six electrons. And, and if we, if, if, if each and every electron, or we can write it, if we remove the four electron continuously, the size of the atom will keep on decreasing. So first, first think the line, then you write the answer. If we remove, remove electrons, electron one by one, one by one, the size, size of the atom will decrease will decrease okay will decrease the size of the atom will will decrease okay and here now you have to keep in mind here you know that this is the important line so you have to mention this line size of the atom will decrease because this is the question this is the thing that he was just asking you that why it is not the size of the atom will decreases or keep on decreasing as more number of proton, more number of proton are attracting, are attracting the lesser number of electrons, the lesser number of, of electrons. Okay, you got it. And it is not practically possible to lose all the four electrons. Thus, Thus, more and more energy will be required. Thus, more and more energy will be required, will be required to lose all four electrons. To lose all four electrons. That's why, that's why carbon cannot lose cannot lose or cannot form all four electrons and form and form and form C4 positive ion. C4 positive ions. And similarly, you have to write it that uh, why did it cannot form C4 negative ions? Why it cannot form C4 negative ions? The reason behind it is that there are only six protons and if you keep on adding the electrons that it is not practically possible for the six proton to hold the extra four electron when total number of 10 electrons, six all already present in extra four will result in 10 electrons. So it is not possible for the electrons to hold six proton. So sorry, for a nucleus, which is carrying only six proton, 
to hold the extra four means total of 10 electron. So you have to write it down. Why it is, why it cannot form? So you have to write it down that why it cannot form uh, four electrons. The reason for this one is, uh, first you think the line and then you write the answer, okay? That in car uh, if it it uh, carbon is going to have uh, four electron in its outermost shells, okay, or we can say that uh, it is not practically possible. You can write it. It is not practically possible to hold. Uh, so write it down. Second, uh, it is not practically possible. Practically possible for for six proton, six proton to hold, to hold 10 electrons, 10 electrons, extra four, right in bracket, extra four. Okay. So that's why, that's why it does not form C4 negative ions. This is the reason that it does not form C4 negative ions. Understood? Understood this one? Tell me fast. Next question. Understood? Madhya? Yes, sir. Why not reply? Uh, draw the structure of the same question. Draw, draw the structure of the first mem. Here is the next question. What is that next question? Uh, the, in the same question, it is asked that uh, also state the reason why it formed co covalent bond. So the reason for this one, that why it formed the covalent bond, uh, the same question in this question, why it formed the covalent bond, the reason behind it that it, it can neither gain four electron nor it for, for lose four electrons. So in order to attain the stability, neither, I'm just writing the short words, neither neither it can gain gain four electrons nor it can lose four electron four electron so so it share four electron to complete its octet to complete its octet and Octet and thus form covalent bond and thus form form sharing bond sharing bond called covalent bond covalent bond understood next uh, why the cow why the cow uh, I state also the reason uh, that why the oh sorry the question is not being asked here. I'm just writing these answers. I'm just going to read this one. Why the covalent bonds, uh, covalent compounds are... Uh, so if it is asking that, if I'm going to give you, this is not being asked. So if you have written that, like I have written this one. So if you have written, don't cut it, let it be. If you have written, you have written the right information, don't cut it. It is not being asked, okay? So now uh, it asks that why the covalent compound forms be, uh, means by the covalent compounds are bad conductor of electricity because uh, it forms the compound uh, by sharing of electrons and so that no electrons is free because they are participating in the bonding so that's why uh, there is since there is no free electrons so there will be no uh, conduction of electricity and by the hope high, low melting and boiling points because same answer because the bond is formed by sharing of electrons and uh, unlike the uh, ionic, you have to write the answer by comparing it with the ionic compounds. Compare it with ionic compound, okay? Comparing it with ionic compound. Ionic compound. You know that ionic compound have Na positive and Cl minus ions like I'm going to give you. There are electrostatic force of attraction between them is there. So that's why the ionic compounds have very high melting and boiling points. Because there is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between there is there. But in, in this covalent compounds, there is no such force is there, so they have low melting points. So you have to write it like this way. Just compare it. 
means you have to write, compare the with the ionic compounds. If you when you compare it, then you will uh, tell the answer that why they have low melting and boiling points. Okay, understood. Next question, if I took. Here, if I took the uh, next question. Question number 13. Okay, so what is being asked here that define the terms isomers. So what is isomers? You know, you have written this one. That isomers are the compounds having same molecular formula but different structures. Isomers are the compounds of hydrocarbons, are the compounds of carbons. Isomers are the compounds of, uh, are the compounds, are the compounds of carbon having same molecular formula same molecular formula but different structures but different structures okay so you have to keep in mind that if the example is possible that if you can answer when you are writing your answer if the example is possible and you wrote you know you are damn sure that you can give the correct example then mention the example in the answers also because examples, when you give the example, the this gives a plus point for your answer. A teacher know that now he is confident that he is giving the example. So when you are going to give some uh, writing an answer, and if the example is possible and the correct example you know, doubt uh, means every times when a student is writing answer, he know whether he is damn sure for the for this answer or not. So if it is a doubt, then don't write it. And if you are sure. Then if you are sure that you are writing a correct example, you know the correct answer for this question, then write the example also. Because when you write the uh, uh, example, then the, during that time, the this gives you a positive uh, uh, answer, means positive points for the examiner that he go to the example and you know that what is this. So like, for example, here you can check if you write the, for example, uh, C2H5 uh, or C3, you can check uh, C4H10, you can take. C four H ten okay, uh, C four H ten. Uh, this is an uh, butane okay. You can take the isomers of this one. You draw the structure. You can simply draw the structure like this way. C S three C S two C S two C S three. And next you can draw like this way. So give the example where it is possible okay. So okay, so this is the isomers of butane. You can give the example. This is butane. Isomers of butane. I did isomers of butane. Okay, and you can write it butane only and butane and butane and this is isobutane. So you can write it like this way. Okay. Next is here it is asking that the compound has the molecular formula C3S6O. Write the name of the compounds and, and their structure formula. So the two compounds, now you have to keep in mind and you must be very uh, considered here, you, you must be here and that this is CNH2NO. CN is three, double of two N is six and then O. You know that I have teach you that the functional isomers, functional isomerism, functional isomerism. And what is functional isomerism? The compounds of hydrocarbons, the compounds of hydrocarbons of hydrocarbon having same molecular formula, having same molecular formula, molecular formula, but different structure, but, but different functional group, sorry, but different functional group. 
functional group they are considered to be as functional isomers you understood understood this one the compounds of hydrocarbons having same molecular formula but different functional groups are called functional isomers okay and here in example aldehyde and ketone aldehyde and ketone show functional isomers these are the previous year question that has been asked this is a question paper that you are getting these each and every question paper is going to have the previous year questions pyq okay so this is ketone aldehyde and ketone and what is the functional group of aldehyde is cho and that of ketone is c double bond o or co but in ketone there must be at least one carbon here one carbon chain here and for ketone for aldehyde it does not require any any uh, because it is going to have its own functional group so it, it it does not require any carbon chain it can have the carbon chain here also but hydrogen is also there but they both show the functional isomerism. That let me show you that how. Let me show you how. The, it is being given that C3S6O. So write down C3 and let make this ketone group here. This is ketone. Why? Because it is going to have C double bond O and here is carbon and here is carbon. So this is prop anone, propanone. And same if I make this chain like this way. This is prop in al aldehyde. On is ketone, al is aldehyde. So they both are going to count the number of carbon, three carbon. Count the hydrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one oxygen. Count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one oxygen and three carbon. They both have the same, same functional group, sorry, different functional group, but, but same uh, molecular formula. So if the question is being asked that what is, this is an NCIT examiner question also. This is also, we have practiced so many times in the classes and moreover, uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, this question is very important, the functional group. There are, there are other also, if I talk about, there are other also, other, other uh, functional, uh, like carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid and esters. And esters also shows carboxylic acid and esters also show this uh, functional isomerism. Like for example, if I write CS3COOH, okay, or if I'm writing CS, uh, like I'm writing for three carbon, CS3, CH2, COOH. This is prop for three carbon prop, prop in oic acid. And if I write CS3, COO, C2, uh, CH3, CH3. This is methyl, methyl ethanoid. Why ethanoid? Because this C2, CH3, COO is ethanoid and this CH3 group is methyl. CH3 group is methyl. C2H5 is ethyl. If it is C2H5 here, then you will write ethyl ethanoid, but it is CH3. Now you can check the formula. 1, 2, 3, 3 carbon. How many hydrogens are there? Uh, 2, 3 and 2, 5 and 1, 6. And then O2. And here is C3S6O2. They both are going to have C3, 3 carbon, three hydro 6 hydrogen and 2 oxygen. So you 